come before you today with a sense of thanksgiving because you have truly been so wonderful to us as your children. Yes. And Lord, we recognize on this day that all that we are is because of who you have been in our lives. So we ask you, Lord, to continue to guide us, continue, O oh Father, to provide us that which we need, that we might be a blessing to those that are around us. And help us, Father, to continue to walk in a way that will bring glory to your name. We ask God for wisdom in the application of your word that others may see our light and give you all the glory that you deserve. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Y'all come on in and make yourself, make yourself at home. All right. Yeah. All right. So, listen, I appreciate everybody coming tonight. Um, uh, and uh, we, tonight, we, you know, it's going to be a topical night again. All right, um, and top tonight again. I, I, I um, was asked to speak on a certain topic. Uh, that's why I um, decided to uh, prepare for tonight. Um, and the, what, what a person approached me with was, Pastor, how do you deal with, how do you deal with brokenness? How do you deal with brokenness, okay? Now, um, and, and people often say, especially in a church environment, that they they are you know they are broken. They wrote a song about it, right? That they are that they are are, are broken. Let me tell you. Even though they say that, that's not what they mean. Okay, uh, and a part of it is just because of it's become popular to say it. What they really mean is I'm broken hearted. Is a difference between I want you to do a slam for it, keep on rolling. <laughs> because there's a difference between being um, broken and broken hearted. Okay. In fact, um, do I have any Old Testament scholars? Any, any Psalm? Any Psalm? Any Psalm scholars? Okay. If you are a Psalm scholar, I say Psalm in the Book of Psalms. If you're a Psalm scholar, it's what you know, that God wants you to be broken. <laughs> he does, okay? Now, because when you think about this week, brokenness, the way David talked about it, it signifies that I have taken off the pride that allowed me to think that I could make it without God. Okay? And when you read Psalms, you, you, you can see that. Uh, because if you even look at the patriarchs in the Bible, and you think about some of the things that they went through, <clears throat> oftentimes what God did was he used events to help them to see something about who they were, where they stood, what they needed to correct, right? Even with the whole nation of Israel, it was about let me let me allow you to get to a point where you come to understand that you can't make it without me in your life. And so if you think about like a wild animal, right, a wild horse, what has to happen to that wild horse before he can become productive on the farm? He has to be broken. And once you break the horse, then you can utilize the horse to make to what to benefit you as the individual that owns that horse. So really, this is the same thing with us, that we are individuals that are being moved by Satan, right? That's what, that's what we are taught, right? I was born in sin, right? And shaped by the iniquity around me. And, 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 the, and the entity that's been driving that force has been Satan. So in order for me to get out of that belief system that I can handle things on my own, I have to get to a point sometimes where what? I gotta turn to God, yeah. right? And, and that's being broken, right? That's not the same as being broken hearted. So um, broken hearted, what that describes is a universal experience where um, we come to a place where we have deep disappointment, right? Deep loss, 
deep discouragement, that feeling that we are now in a state of hopelessness, okay? That's broken hearted. That's not the same as being broken, okay? Now, so what causes us to get broken hearted? Mostly it is one simple thing. And that is things are not going the way I want them to go. I don't care what it is, right? If, 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 you, if you're catching hell in your marriage and you might say, he's trying to break me. Really what you're saying, things are not going the way I want them to go. If you own your job and, 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 you, and people say, I just feel broken. You know what they're really saying? Things are not going the way I want them to go. And so really what you're saying, that, that's, the, that's the broken heartedness that you're really feeling, right? Because you're not talking about physical breaking of your heart. Why? Because that's okay. If I break your heart physically, what happens? You're dead. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So we're talking about the emotional heart, right? And so, 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 so really what, what you find is, is that here's the deal. Broken hearted really is a sense that, you know what? I don't understand why God would have me here. And therefore, I don't appreciate God having me here. And therefore, I feel like things are not going the way they ought to go. Now, in Romans, it says something like this. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called to his purpose. There's nothing in that text that says the word. Walking <laughs> in front of the camera. Good evening. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in that text that says that all things are good. Right? It says all things do what? Work for the good. It didn't say all things were good. Right? It says it works for my good. Okay? To them that what? Love the, Love the Lord and call according to his purpose. So what that's telling me then is this, that you know what? Everything that's happening to me, no matter what it is, is so God can get the glory out of my life. Okay? So now, because if I'm called according to his purpose, not according to my purpose, but his purpose, now, if I'm getting called according to his purpose, then what he's doing in me is so he will get glory. Okay? We, are, we, are we together so far? All right? So, so, so then, if that's the case then, if I do recognize now, and I hope you do, that being broken is not the same as being brokenhearted, and that if, if it is broken, if the problem is brokenheartedness, then the question then becomes is, well, how do I repair a broken heart? Right? Al Green wrote a song about it. So Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. Brother. All right. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing you have to ask yourself is this, is, is wait a minute, is that if what, if what I just said is true, if what I just said is true, then the question becomes this, can and does God want to use my broken heartedness to bring him glory? You say the answer is yes. Yeah. Well, if the answer is yes, think about this for a minute. If, you, if what you're saying and you believe that, then should I be ever upset that I have a broken heart? No. No, but we do. No, we get all upset. So if the answer is yes, is there, is there scripture in the Bible to help me understand that? Okay. And of course it is, or else I wouldn't be up here talking about it as a topic, would I? Mm -hmm. All right, so do me a favor mm -hmm. and turn with me to Psalm 51. I'm sorry, Pastor, I didn't Psalm 51, 
Now, I'm going to be in the King James Version, which you don't have to do King James if you don't want to. So the question we're trying to find out is what? Does God want, number one, does God want to use my brokenheartedness? So one could also say what? Does God want me to be brokenhearted? Because one cannot be true without the other. Can it? Y'all got 51? Okay, now go down to verse 16. Psalm 51, 16. <clears throat> All right. Now, here, here we go. For thou, and who is the thou? God. God. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise when our rebellious wheels have been shattered and our hearts ruptured by grief, we can offer God only brokenness, for he is willing to make us whole. Isn't that a kick in the head? That all the stuff that David was going through, he finally came to one inescapable conclusion about God. What does he find the most valuable? Right spirit. It's right there, isn't it? How do I get the right spirit, he says. When my heart has been changed. Isn't that what he said? He don't, because... What, or let, me, let me put it in a different way. What allows you to give God burnt offering? I mean, you don't do it anyway, but you know they, they did back then. Why would you give God a burnt offering? Repent. Hmm? No, no, for real. How, why would you do it? I mean, you give you trying you give me the give me the politically correct answer, which is not real. Because you want something. See, that's the only reason why you do it is because you want something, right? I mean, that's the, that's the reality of it, right? If you didn't want something from God, you would not give God anything. Everybody in here wants something from God. Amen. Am I right or wrong? Yes, Either you want to go to heaven, or you want God to help you pay some bills, or you want God to give you somebody who will help you pay some bills, or you want something. And if you could get it without giving God anything, you wouldn't be in here. You were here because at some point you had a broken heart. And you decided, you know what? I need to go to God. And, and because you had a broken heart, that's when you decided it would be beneficial to give God an offering. But he's saying, I don't need your offering. Do I need your money? This was God is saying. Do I need your money? No. Do I need your your you know what a burnt offering was, right? What was a burnt well literally what was a burnt offering? Lamb. Right, a, a, a physical sacrifice. You think God really ate a lamb chop? <laughs> no. He said, I didn't need that, but I understand why you gave it. He said, but what I only, really what I needed from you was your broken heart. Amen. And your broken heart allowed you to say what? I want to give the offering. He's saying to you what? I, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. So your broken heart, I love if you give it to me. Because that's when I can use you. Now, I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute. How does God get the glory, and why would God get the glory out of my broken heart? Because if you don't have a broken heart, you get arrogant. The broken heart would allow you to put God first in everything. Because now you're saying what? God did it. God did it. God did it. Now God is getting the glory. When you don't have the broken heart, who gets the credit? You do. And you know just like I know. 
that you get the credit. Then you talk and jump about what you did, how smart you were, and how you were able to make some things happen. Right? But God in your life, it changes things, okay? Now, do me a favor and turn to 2 Corinthians right quick. How you doing, my dear? Yeah, thank you. And we're going to be looking at verses 3 and 4 in chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Here's what it says. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord, <laughs> Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Let me read it one more time. And hopefully it'll make you happy when I read it one more time. Okay. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Right? Who comforted us in all our tribulation. So he starts out by saying what? I'm thankful to God that every time I went through some stuff, God was able to comfort me in the midst of my trouble, my tribulation. So I'm thankful for that, that he comforted me. Now he looks at it and says, but I'm wondering, now I shouldn't say wondering, now he come, he's coming into the realization of why God allowed him to go through what he went through. And he says, here's why I had to go through it, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Y'all following that? Amen. He's saying what? I learned that God would comfort me in any tribulation. And now I understand that for God to get the glory out of my life, I have to take what I've learned and show somebody else the same thing. Okay? He's saying that, you know what? Who, well, who was Paul? Let me throw it out there right quick this way because everybody may not know where I'm coming from. Who was Paul? Because Paul is the one writing this, right? Who was Paul? The father of grace. Hmm? Who? The father of grace. The father of grace? Of the great message. Say, say it again. Of grace. That's one of the great messages. Okay, I, I, okay. Well, well, he was saw killing people at first. Right, so let's say, let's put, what you're saying is not wrong. Okay. okay. I'll put it this way Paul was a messenger, right, of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so we could say he's a, he was a messenger of God. We would call him a preacher, right? Mm -hmm. So he's a messenger of God in, in some way. That's his, his job is to help folk come into the understanding of who God is. Right? Okay. Now, how many of you have said, have said inwardly or outwardly, God got a mission on my life? Okay. Look at the hand going up right here. Look at no, right. Minister, ministers of the living God, right? Okay. Now, if Paul had to go through so he would really know and, and be able to empathize with other folk that were going through, so he could help them see what God could do. What makes you different? What makes you different? The difference oftentimes is, is that if I ain't learned, if I haven't learned the lesson yet, I gotta keep getting taught. Because he just said right here in black and white, if you got a Bible that got black and white ink, got black ink in it, he just said what? That the reason why. God allowed me to go through this is so I would learn how to take what I have learned to use with you. Why would that be important? 
Okay, I'll circle back around for you. Everybody in here is here because they have been broken hearted. <coughs> if you weren't broken hearted, you wouldn't be in here. That's why most atheists got money. You don't, you don't get it, do you? Because folk with money don't feel the need necessarily to go, come to God. You don't see you don't see broke folks saying there is no God. You go to any culture, any culture in the world, and people who have nothing always are saying what? There's got to be a God somewhere. And they might not call him what you call him, but they're always saying it's a higher being. Okay? See, the only folk that think there's not a God, I'm, not, I'm, saying, oh, I'm saying only, obviously, I'm speaking, you know, generally, are people who have said, I can do it without any, anybody else. Okay? Because most of us came to Christ because we had been brokenhearted somewhere along the way. All right? So what Paul is saying, if the wrong, if, if you don't understand who God is, you will miss the opportunity when it presents himself. You will. Now, if you know God, if you know God, if you know God, K-N-O-W, if you know God will provide, how long does your heart stay broken? It never does. You know why? Because you know that what? He will do what? He will provide. He will comfort me in my tribulation. Right? Because you know that. And so when you're talking to other folk, what will your conversation always be? God will provide. Now, until you know that, until you know that, you tell other folk about your problems. And when you tell other folk about your problems, what have you just said about your God? He is not a comforter of my tribulation. Because if he's a comforter of your tribulation, you never speak about your tribulation. You speak about your coming out of your tribulation. <laughs> it's making sense to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because y'all are different than you were last week. <laughs> <laughs> y'all a little more energetic last week. Maybe it's the topic. I don't know. Okay. All right. Okay. Because it says what? That, 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 that's, that, that's how he will get the glory out of my life. All right? Now, so if, if I know that, right? If I know that what? God wants to use my broken heart, that in and of itself should change the way I view what I'm going through. Right? It should. I'm not saying it does right now because we haven't gotten it in. But that should start to change how I view what I am going through. Okay? If you think about all the patriarchs in the Bible, every patriarch in the Bible, can you think of one, based on the definition of being brokenhearted, can you think of one that had not been brokenhearted at one point? <laughs> all of them. Uh, and the more brokenhearted they were, the more God used them to get glory out of who he was. Okay. If you go all the way back, that's what you'll see. You look at Moses, for example. Broken hearted. Wasn't it? He had to leave, he had to leave home and go in the wilderness. You think he won't broken hearted? If you was living like you were the son of Pharaoh, and you had to leave home and go live in the wilderness, that's broken heart. Right? That, that changed some things in your life, don't it? If you look at David, you think David won't broken hearted? He was chased by his what? He was chased by his father-in-law who tried to kill him, right? His son raped his daughter, right? It, you don't think that got broken hearted? Oh yeah. His other son tried to kill him. His best friend turned his back on him, tried to kill him. Broken hearted. Okay. Question. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? Fire furnace? Now, I know you all don't think about it this way, but I do. Now, they might have talked some junk, but if you think they won't worry, you just don't know human nature. 
Huh? Now they might they might be looking at the fire and they might have been saying, I don't know if my God will deliver me, but I know he can, yes. So you just spoke to human nature. So let's say that you have a belief that what you're going through is is God ordained and that there's something greater that's going to come from that pain. Mm -hmm. But human nature causes you to still have human emotion about what has happened. Is that wrong? Is that a lack well, of I, belief? I won't say whether it's wrong or right. I'm just going to say it's, it demonstrates my faith is not necessarily where I want it to be. Okay. Matter of fact, I got you, I got you, brother. Hold on, let me just answer right quick. It's, it's ironic you asked the question because what I just said about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego answers the question. And here's why. If all you you all know about anybody not know about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? Okay. Oh, so let me tell you right quickly. All right, there was these three young boys. Okay, uh, one named Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. All right. And and, and 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 they were told that they had to follow the rules and regulations of a certain king. And if you don't follow the rules and regulations, then uh, basically who you were going, you know, worship, that you get thrown into the fire furnace. Well, they refused to do what the king said, so he said, "Well, you got to go into the fire furnace." Now their response to getting thrown in was this: They said, "O oh, king, live forever." Whether or not our God will deliver us, we don't know. That tells you right there that they were saying what you just said. Human nature is what? We're going to go in here and we might get burnt up. Because if they knew they were going to come out, they wouldn't have said, whether he will deliver us or not, we don't know. Right? But they said what? We know he is able to deliver us. So they were saying, he might let us die. But that don't mean he ain't God. That's what you're just saying, right? He might, I might not get out of this. So there's still that doubt. They still had the doubt, but they just said what? Well, we ain't got no choice, because why? We gonna have to go in this fire, why? Because we ain't got no choice. Y'all gonna throw us in anyway, right? Now they came out of the fire and the Bible says what? When they go in the fire, the king sees another entity in the fire with them. And so the king says, did I not throw three in? But yet I see four. And the fourth one looks like the Son of God. And so they come out of the fire. And the Bible says they don't even have smoke on them. That's how good God has been, right? But yet and still, it doesn't mean they didn't have some doubt. Because if they didn't have any doubt, their words wouldn't have been what they were. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you were talking about the difference between a broken heart and brokenness. Mm -hmm. But if you experience a broken heart and you don't view it from a vantage point of God using that in your life for good, can it lead to brokenness? It should. Well, again, well, let me, let me, no, no, hold, let me back up. Let me say it differently. I hope it would. Okay, that's what, I hope it would. Here's why I'm saying it that way. Because the Bible says God wants you to be broken, right? So the hope is what? That what I am going through will cause me to admit I can't make it by myself. And that only way I can make it is if God helps me. Because when people say I'm broken, that's what really they're saying. I can't take it no more, right? Am I right? You know what they really are trying to say? I can't, I just, this is it. I'm, in, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm at the last straw. I can't take it no more. Well, why you, the reason why you say you can't take it no more is you're really saying what? I can't do it by myself. And every human being needs to understand that you can't do it by yourself. Because if you knew you couldn't do it by yourself, you would always depend on God. Which is what he wants you to do. Right? Okay, we on the same page still? Yes. Okay, all right. So so now again, so if if I if I know that then, right, if I know what? That 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 God uh 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 will use he wants me to be broken so I can let go of for me and accept him as my as as, as who, who he is, and he, he will use my broken heart for his glory. Right? And that's what the scripture tells us. So if that being the case, then the question says, Well, wait a minute. If I have a broken heart, because here's the problem, if I have been broken hearted, right, how, how can I be assured of how God will respond to my broken heartedness? Okay, 
because how you view that will determine how you deal with the situation you are in. Whether or not you will be, woe is me, or God is good. Okay? How, whether you will view it that way or not. Okay? Because remember, remember the Bible says something like this, count it all what? Joy. Joy when you what? Fall into. Yeah. But is that how we normally see it? No, you know why we don't see it that way? Because we don't, yes, my dear. So what if you're like a bearer of bad news? Like you literally told someone news that is just so devastating that you can actually see them like right in front of you, even though that they don't really like really respond or say anything. Mm -hmm. But you can see how they are like perceiving what you're saying to them. How do you like comfort them or try to get them through that? Okay, I, this is what I perceive your question is to me. And that is this. What if circumstances that someone becomes aware of causes them to be broken hearted? Yeah. And I am, I am there to witness that. How do I help them out? Yeah. Well, uh, the answer is really simple, okay? And that is, what helped you out? No, you know what I'm saying? I mean that's really it. Remember what remember what we said in Second Corinthians and what he said in Second Corinthians that the, the 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 Paul says what I have come to learn is that the reason why I have been where I am is so I can take what I know now and get you where you need to be. Because I can't take you somewhere that I haven't been. Right? If if you. Who are the who are the best counselors for drug addicts? Ex drug addicts, because you know if you haven't been if you haven't been an addict, you really don't understand what it means to be one. You know, I don't care how much education you have, you really don't understand this. You, you know, you just you just don't. And so you will look down on a person who is a drug addict because you don't understand it. You know, but if you've been a drug addict, you understand that what I ain't here because I want to be here. I mean, I wanted to get high, but I didn't want to be here. But as, as as time progressed, I'm not getting high anymore. I'm just getting even. Because after a while, the drugs don't have the same impact on you like they used to have. So now it ain't fun. Now it's what this is what I need to get by every day. But if you haven't been there, your thinking is what. Like like uh, Mrs. Reagan, you you think like Mrs. Reagan thought. Just say no. <laughs> but anybody that's been on drugs know what? That's a bunch of stupid foolishness. You can't just say no once you hooked on heroin. You can't just say no once you hooked on crack. It don't work that way. You can't even say no once you hooked on. A whole lot of stuff. <laughs> you might say no, but you're going to still be what? Doing it anyway. But if you've been there, okay? All right. So, I mean, I hope, I hope I'm, ask, I ask, I'm asking you a question. Is that you take what you've known, you, you, what got you through, right? And you help them by what's got you through. The, the difference is this, and this, you know, is that if I have been coming to you with woe is me all the time, and woe is me and woe is me, I can't help you now. Because what? I'm not authentic in my presentation to you. But if, I've, if you have seen me going through pure tea hell, and I've always bounced back with a smile on my face, and, you, and I say, hey, let me, explain, let me tell you how I got through what I went through. Then it's authentic because you say, yeah, I, I, you say to yourself, what? I don't know how you got through, but I see you did, right? God really did that for you? Yes, he did, you know? Especially, let me, I, you know, I've said this before from the pulpit, but it, it might not have always came across the way I wanted to come across, okay? Let me tell you something. The best miracle isn't that God gave you everything you asked for. The best miracle is he gave you nothing, but you still made it through. 
Think about what Paul asked him for. Lord, what? I need you to take this thorn out of my flesh. Whatever that thorn was, we don't know, but we know what it was very painful. And the Lord said, Paul, my grace is sufficient unto thee. Okay? All right? Let me tell you something. i tell you this. Normally, I wouldn't tell you this, but this is my personal opinion. But I'm going to tell you anyway. Okay? I'm going to tell you anyway. I consider myself to be a reasonably healthy person. Okay? I do. But let me tell you why. My prostate number is 13.5. Anybody know what that means? I do. What does that mean? Huh? 13.5. I know that ain't good at all, is it? Because anything above two is bad. <laughs> okay? I got high cholesterol. I took my blood pressure today. It was 168 over 80 something. So is that good? No. No. I got, cis, I got two cysts on my kidney. Is that good? I got a tumor in my bladder. And I got blood cancer. You know what the miracle is? I'm still alive. See, other people will be saying, you know what? They'll be saying, oh my God, oh my. And I ain't saying no feeling now. <laughs> Once in a while, I might say, Lord, what's going on? Hold on now, wait, watch out now. Hold on. But my point is this. See, the miracle isn't that he cured me of anything. The miracle is I'm still here. See, that's the miracle. Right? So see, sometimes when you're talking to people and they want to say, well, God didn't heal my body yet. No, wait a minute. The miracle ain't that he heals you. The miracle is I don't care what you're going through, you're still here. Yeah. If the doctor says you got two months to live and you've been living for three years, okay, I don't care what I got, I'm still, I'm still living. <laughs> right? You broke. Yeah, I'm broke, but I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I still got roof of my head. Well, what difference do it make if you broke if you're still eating every day? Lord, see, it makes no difference. Okay, I, 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 you know, this is this is I'm not this is not original. But I'm going to tell you. Okay, Dave Chappelle said that he was arguing with his father, not arguing, but debating with his dad. He said, "I'm tired of being poor." And Dave Chappelle said to his dad, said to, said to him, hey, dummy, you're not poor. He said, poor is a state of mind. He said, you broke. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's a difference, isn't it? It's different because if I'm eating, what difference do it make I don't have any money? I'm still eating. Right? If I still have a roof over my, roof over my head, Okay, I might get kicked out next week, but I got somewhere to stay today. Oh, right? And that's the thing. But until you have been there, it's hard for you to tell another person that. Yep. You, you know, but when you've been there, then you can tell somebody that, and when they get your story, then it'll change their position and say, you know what, it ain't as bad as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. and that's the key, right? Okay. Did they answer the question okay? Yes. Okay, all right. So then, so what then, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So how then does God respond? Because that's key, that's what you, this question, we're at. how does God respond to, to that brokenheartedness, all right? Now, the answer uh, is found throughout the Bible, but I want us to go to Psalms again, okay? I want us to go to Psalms again. And let's look at Psalm 34. And we're going to look at verses 17 through 19. <clears throat> let me ask you this. Well, I, should, I'm, I'm, I should say ask you, but let me just, you know, want you to think about this for, for a minute. From, from your own personal, from your own personal it's, I mean, because everybody in here, my presumption is, uh, know the Lord. Am I right? Yeah. Anybody here not know Jesus as a person of Satan? <coughs> or at least haven't heard of him or something? You heard of him? <laughs> Since you heard of him, you heard of him, right? I'm trying to get to know. Okay. But you heard of him, right? Okay. Before the night's over, girl, you're going to know him. <laughs> you're going to know him. Right? You won't be getting to know. It's going to be, but my goodness, 
I know the Lord. <laughs> okay? All right. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is true for me. I'm sure it's true for you, too. Have you ever thought about this? That the times when you feel the closest to God, when I say feel, let me say it differently. The times when you're moving to get closest to God are those times when you'll give it, get in the most pain. You ever think about that? Isn't that a kick in the head? That, 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 that what draws me closest to the one that I say I want to be close to. Because that's what, that's what we pray. Think about your prayers. Lord, I just want to be close to you. <laughs> I, I, and then you can't imagine. And so, but the, but 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 what makes us close to him is not getting everything we want. That takes us further from him. Because when you're getting everything you want, the last thing on your mind is some Jesus. Amen. Mess around and win the lottery tomorrow. I'll be willing to bet you that Jesus ain't gonna be on your mind. You're gonna be calling up some 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 travel directors. You're gonna be all this kind of stuff. You know, whatever, whatever. You ain't gonna be doing that stuff. What you gonna be doing with your money? <laughs> okay, so right, so oh, I, I, well, I know somebody gonna be doing something around that. Cause if you ain't going, he gonna be by himself going, and you gonna <laughs> he gonna be in like Pogo, right? <laughs> Sipping on Tahitian trees and whatnot. <laughs> because for most of us, if you got everything you ask God for, your mind would not be on Him. Amen. Your mind going to be on what you got. If you're riding around in a nice Ferrari, if you're riding around in a Bentley, your mind on your car. You're going to park way down there, go walk away, look back at it, walk away, look back at it. That's what you're going to be doing. Your mind ain't going to be on, Jesus gave me this. Right? Right. They, they, they ain't gonna be, your license plate is not going to say the Lord's car. Oh. All right, okay. <laughs> So, 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 so the bottom line is that while we don't cherish it, that's really how we get close to God. Right mm -hmm. now, here's what here's what Psalm 34 says: The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their troubles. The Lord is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart. Right. And save it such that be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them him out of them all. Okay. And if you if you if you just look at that and just say, let me just take it the way you say it. We don't have to get all you know up in the up in the sky by the spiritual all that kind of stuff. Just what does it say, right? That the righteous be calling on God. Because every time folk that know the Lord, and even if you don't know the Lord, right? If you, if you don't know him too much, but don't know a little bit, when you get in trouble, what's the first thing you do? Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I know I ain't been right, but help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus, right? That's when we start bargaining with God, right? Lord, if you get me out this time, I know I said I was going to do it, but if you get me out this time, I mean it. Right? We get, we, we get it closer, right? He said, what? He delivers us, delivers us out of all of our troubles. Why do we know from our own experiences that this is factual? Right. And what? And because you what? You still calling. See, if you if it didn't work, you would have stopped doing it a long time ago. You would have walked away. I bet you what? Go to a doctor and, and he do nothing for you. And you got more pain the next time around. I bet you change doctors. Go to a bank and they lose your money. I bet you change banks. See, the reason why you ain't changed God is because when you call on him, he gets you out of where you are. Now, he may not do it the way you thought it was going to happen, but in the end, you look back and say, when I look back over my life and all that he has done, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Right? Because he always gets us out and so we keep going back. And that's what he says here, right? He, we got delivered. 
the Lord is near unto them, now or near unto them, that are of a broken heart. Look at what he's saying right here. See, we worried about the broken heart. He said, no, God is right there near you all the time. The more broken hearted you are, he said, the closer God gets to you. Because he's just like your just like your mama was with you. The more you were down and out, the more she hugged you and got close to you. When you was well and run around and bounce and act like a fool and call them problems, they, they were like, you know what? You made your bed. You got to lie. They be, sometimes they will say, I hope they bump their head. Because <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I have said that about my kids. Say, I be done told them, don't ride the bicycle in the street. Then I go in the house, what they do? <laughs> you know what I be saying? I hope that joke will fall down and bump his head. <laughs> so he'll know the street is hard. Okay? Now, I mean, you don't really mean it, but you know, you say it. And if they do bump the head, what you do? Baby, you, baby, you, I, oh, Lord, come here. And then you hold them up, right? Because you know what? Every parent, when they see you really have a broken heart, will pull you to their bosom. Yes, sir. Okay? He's saying that's the same way. He, well, he said what? I'm the author of that, right? All right. Many, what? Broken heart, what? And save it such with a contrite spirit. What's a contrite spirit? One who has recognized what? Where I am is not where I ought to be. Right? When you recognize what? That I need God with me because where I am ain't where I ought to be. I haven't been right. Okay? I haven't been right. All right? Now, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the affliction of the righteous. Okay? It didn't say it the right, it said the righteous, okay? Now, let me say this so we can make sure that my sister back here, right, walks out knowing Jesus on a personal level. Amen. What is the difference between being right and righteous? Okay, right means what? That I have been living where I am always not wrong. That's what right means. Righteous is a state of being, right? Righteous means that I have somehow been positioned so that what I do is not treated as if it was wrong. That's different, right? Now, what makes it different and what makes it so important is this. None of us has the capacity to live a life without doing something wrong. It just isn't there. So that what, that's what makes it so sweet to be righteous. Because that means even when I am wrong, I will be seen as if I'm right. Now, which one is better? Righteous. righteous. Yeah, because what are the chances are that you're not going to do something wrong tonight? Zero. Why? Because somebody in here Okay, do me a favor, uh, uh, Doc. Stand up for a minute, if I'm stand up for a minute, if I'm. Uh, okay, I know you. I know, I know you said surgery not too long ago, but you know, still you you still the man. See, I, <laughs> you, you see how handsome this guy is right here. Somebody, when he walked in, said to themselves, "Hmm, that's a handsome joke." <laughs> 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 see. <laughs> Hey, but they just thought it. I ain't said they just thought it. They, oh, they thought it. Hey, listen, let me tell you something right now. Everybody mind went on Jesus when they came in here. Come on, come on. Okay. They, they, they might have came to church to get their mind on Jesus. Somebody came in ready to hurt somebody. Okay. Somebody came in angry without just cause. Right? Praise the Lord, right? So guess what that meant? I came in wrong. Okay, it's just simple as that. Okay, so if I came in wrong, I know I can't always be right, but I can always be righteous. Okay, Jesus sets us up to be righteous, not right, because he recognizes what? 
You can't be right all the time. It's impossible. God knew that. That's why he allowed them to give sacrifices. Okay? For you Old Testament scholars, you didn't do sacrifices every time you committed a sin, every time, did you? No, you did it based on the time period for when the sin was supposed, for when the offering was supposed to be presented. So if you presented your annual offering, that meant for 12 months you were righteous until you presented your offering again. Because if you gave an offering back in Old Testament times, every time you did something wrong, there would be no cows in your herd. <laughs> every time you be, oh, gotta take another, take another, oh, gotta take another lamb. Take another. No, you took that one lamb and went that one time, and you got covered what? Until the next time came around. So you were righteous until the next time came around. Jesus said, What? I'm your lamb. I am your perfect offering. When you give me, you will be righteous <coughs> forever. Okay? Everybody, everybody understand that? Yes. Everybody understand that in the back? All right. Now, now we're cooking now. Now we're cooking. See, now I feel better now, see? Yeah. All right. So that means what? for all of us that are righteous, what? He says what? Many are your afflictions. He's telling you right there, you're going to have a lot of afflictions. Well, he told you early on why you're going to have afflictions, right? So you can learn. And he's telling you now, just because you are righteous don't mean you're going to make mistakes. Your afflictions come because you make mistakes. It's life. I don't care how much, you, two people are married, okay, let's say. Both of them saved, sanctified, he with the Holy Ghost. That don't mean neither one of them are going to make mistakes. It don't have to be infidelity that caused the mistake. It can be you spent more money than you should have spent. <laughs> right? It can be what? You know, you didn't hug me when I wanted you to hug me. It could be what? You burnt up them pork chops. It could be anything. <laughs> but they're still going to make me what? Not really happy. Okay? So there still will be what? An affliction. So even though we might be saved, we still might what? Do things that cause affliction. And we learn from them, and we learn from them, and we learn from them, and God will what? Deliver us from them all. Okay, we good? Yes. All right. Let me get here. Let me move on. I was going to get on the verse. I got to move on because time is almost up. Okay. So then the question is do you all believe everything the Bible says so far? Yes. Yes. I got to make sure before we move now. Okay. All right. You, you good in the back? Praise the Lord. Well, look at God. Look at God. All right. So, so, okay. So, so if, if, if that's the case, then the last. The last thing is simple then, isn't it? And that is, if I know all that, right? If I know all that, then what should I really do when I'm brokenhearted? What should I do? If I know that he gonna do, if I know that he wants me, he wants me to be brokenhearted, and I didn't really know that at first, and now I'm a little mad at him for wanting me to be brokenhearted, but now I know why, right? If I know what he will do for me, I know what he will do for me when I become brokenhearted. The question is, how do I deal with it so the period of my brokenheartedness won't cause me to do something stupid, but will cause me to deal with where I am in a way that God will allow me to give him my brokenheartedness so it becomes a sacrifice of pleasure. Because every sacrifice you give to God is not a pleasurable one, right? Just like everybody done what? lovingly tied. Some folk grudgingly tied. But you want to be to give that sacrifice to us a pleasure. All right? So here we go. How do we do that? Let's go to Ecclesiastes right quick. Third chapter, Ecclesiastes. And this is what? What do I do when I'm broken hearted? What do I do to get through it so I get through it with a smile on my face knowing that what God got me covered? Right? We're Ecclesiastes, yeah. third chapter. That's the Old Testament. For those of you who got the regular Bible, you got to turn the pages. That's the Old Testament, okay? All right, here we go. Third chapter, verses one and four. I mean, I'm, just, I'm skipping two and three because it's the same <clears throat> stuff, but it, you know, we, we, we just don't need to go through it, you know, go through the two, two verses. Let me just go one and four. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Verse 4, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Right? 
You know what he's saying? Hey, listen. If you think that God hadn't set up some stuff in your pathway, you don't know the God that you serve. He said, on this earth, there's a time for everything, but the time has already been measured. And you need to start thinking about it that way, that my God will provide. So even though what? There's a time for me to weep. I know what? It ain't gonna last always. I know that what? Weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. His point is what? God may have set aside that what? This is going to last for five weeks. But if I know at the end of five weeks, he's going to turn that thing around. So I'm laughing. I can deal with the weeping without letting it cause me to be in despair. If I know he's going to turn my stuff around, if I know that right now I might be mourning, but I'm going to be dancing at some point in time, then I can go through that because I can see the end of the tunnel. It's, it's, it's like working a hard job, but knowing what? Payday is going to be on Friday. Amen. So I can put up with this son, you know. When I was a kid, I worked in, I worked in, when I was a kid, I worked in, in, in tobacco fields in a place called Few Cape Arena in North Carolina, pulling tobacco, okay? And let me tell you something. That's some of the hottest, hardest work you'll do, all right? Sometimes the snakes would be curled up around the stalk of the tobacco. You reach down when we're doing bottom priming, and you reach down and pull the tobacco up and look up a snake right there, right along with you, okay? But you know how you keep on doing it? Even though it be 99 degrees. And see, back then, they didn't believe in getting a whole lot of breaks. One of 15 minute break, you know, no, 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 no. It was, it, you dropped out, roll him over, get him out of the way, and just keep on going, okay? Because you knew when Friday came, the eagle was going to fly, right? So the hard work you did, why? I'm getting paid on Friday. It's the same thing about going through, he's saying. That it's gonna it's gonna lead and you're gonna be dancing again. All right? Okay, now. Uh let me see here. How much time I got? Two. I got two minutes. All right, let's let's jump over a little bit then. Uh um go to Psalms 19 right quick. Psalms 19. And we're going to look at verses 7 and 8. So just, just a recap. So the first thing I should do is what? Recognize that what? Trouble don't last always. That there's a time for it. And the time has been set by God for what? He also going to bring me to a place where I can what? Dance. Dance. All right. Verse, uh, uh, Psalm 19, 7 and 8. Here's what it says. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul... The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So what is he saying there? The first one says what? The first thing he says in Ecclesiastes is what? There's a time for my stuff. So I ain't got, it's, it's, it's going to turn around for my good, right? The, the second one in, here in, in Psalms is saying what? That the word of God, you can bank on. You can bank on the word of God. He's saying what? Because the more you know about who God is and what God will do, the less you are, less likely you are to allow where you are to define how you feel. Because if you know God got you, I don't care where you are, you don't feel bad about it. I don't care what the doctor tells you. If you know God got you, you don't feel bad about it. And the more you know God and the more you trust God, the less likely you are to allow your circumstances to define your emotional state. Okay? It's simple. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just as simple. Do you think about little kids, for example? Think about little kids, for example. How long does a little kid get upset because they're hungry? How long? Soon they get fed, what? They can be living in the back backwoods of, of, of somewhere and ain't got but two toys, a stick and another stick. And guess what? As long as their parents are there, they're going to play. Why are they going to play even though they ain't got nothing? 
because they know their parents. See, in their mind is this, they gonna take care of me. They got me. So, so I ain't worried about a thing. I don't care what's going on, they still laugh and play. The reason why you're not laughing and playing is because you haven't gotten God's word in you thick enough that you know God the way you knew your parents. Because your parents was crying the whole while you were laughing. <laughs> they walked about, oh Lord, I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know how we're going to make it. But you were having a good time because you knew them. Okay? And yeah. you know what? I know that sounded simple, didn't it? When we just went through it like that. You know why it sounded simple? Because it is. It just is. And if you think about what we just said earlier, you know how we, like I said, we always testify. That's one of my good testimonies. Because, you know, I, 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 used to, I used to say it from the pulpit at least once a month. Uh, you know, I look back all over my life and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God for saving me, right? Mm -hmm. That's the one right there. Yes, that'll get you. That'll get you excited, right? Yeah. But why, why do we say that? Because it's true. When you are looking back, you see how stupid you were for being worried. Mm -hmm. Think about it. You look back and you say, "Why was I so worried?" Because now it worked out, didn't it? Yeah. How many of y'all been broke before? Not poor, but broke. Some of y'all been poor before too. How many of y'all been broke before? <laughs> broke I have. Before. But what? It worked out. Yes. Ain't it something? But when you're going through it, what are you doing? Oh, my Lord. Jesus. How many of y'all had somebody do something to you that caused you to be broken hearted? Mm -hmm. Right? But how many got through it and said, I ain't needed in my life no way? <laughs> These be like, I'm glad they showed me who they really was. <laughs> It's, 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 it, it, that's why I say this sound, this sounds simple because it is. All you have to do is rather than take what's in the past and act like it didn't happen is to learn from the past and apply it in the present and the future. That's all you got to do. That's why, you know, um, Al Green said what he said <laughs> about men in a broken heart. What did he say? He knew it. You know how he knew? When you get some hot grit stone on you. <laughs> you learn. Yeah. All right, okay, all right. Any questions before we close out? Any questions? Questions or comments? Saint Cemetery is a sad day in Hooterville. This is my last official Bible study. With you all. I know. I know. Sad, it's sad, 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 sad. So sad, sad. when we had an unofficial Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, and you know what? I, I, I probably will, will be back at some point in time. But I just gotta let the new pastor what get his get his bearings and get set up and whatnot. And once he gets set up and whatnot, he might say, you know what, sir, would you mind doing X, Y, Z? And if he asks me to do something, I will definitely do it. Okay. Uh, and we, we're still waiting on Deacon. They, people are asking about their finance class, Deacon uh, Scott. Mm -hmm. They've been asking about the finance one. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was going to get confused. I was saying about March time frame. Okay. All right. All right. Whatever, whatever he said, I'm fine with now. Okay. All right. Now, listen, my, my, my young lady. Now, before, this is what I want you to do. When we leave here, I want you to walk right down the center aisle, come up here and talk to me, okay? okay. It'll take for 30 seconds. No, okay. Maybe that's a lie. It can take at least a minute or two. Okay. <laughs> All right, Deacons, in y'all hands. These folks ready to go home, bro. Come on up. Come on up, man. Can y'all send a Deacon to know how to walk next time? <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you, dear Lord, first to say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to sit and learn of you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, dear Lord, please do not dismiss us from your sight, dear Heavenly Father. Watch over and get us back home to our appointed destination safely, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, thank you.